there was sort of mischievousness almost childhood like mischievousness to him uh, all along and that's something that uh, yash samir and i really loved about him because uh, he was at the same time like a mentor and like we used to call him papa ji because obviously he's like not old enough to be our dad but like uh, much older but at the same time he would be the uh, youngest at heart in the group so um, but he was, i mean t- let's talk about he was always the, he was always the prankster Hello and welcome to GQ India's first food and drink festival. I'm Thomas Zacharias, chef partner in the Bombay Canteen, and joining me today is Chef Rahul Akerkar, uh, the chef owner at Qualia, Mumbai. Chef Rahul is a hey. legend in the food scene, the creative force behind iconic restaurants like Indigo and, of course, now Qualia, and someone I deeply admire. Uh, welcome, Chef Rahul. Uh, we're hey, here hi. today to celebrate the incredible legacy of uh, Chef Floyd Cardoz, culinary director and founder of uh, Hunger Inc. Uh, my teacher, my mentor, and a dear friend of uh, both Chef Rahul and I. Uh, Chef Floyd was a trailblazer. He put modern Indian food on the global map with his game-changing restaurant Tabla in New York in the 90s. He won Top Chef Masters in 2011 with his famed Upma Polenta, a dish honoring. his uh, indian gastronomic roots so much of what he stood for defines the restaurant scene and the kind of culinary uh, boom in india today and we're going to talk about the journey so let's dive straight in um, my first interaction with chef floyd was actually a skype interview long before uh, the time of zoom and uh, this was again for in, in me interviewing for the bombay canteen back in 2014 um i remember being very intimidated because chef floyd had this reputation of being like a like a taskmaster uh, like a perfectionist and um i but he actually made me feel that he is very very soon um uh, among the many questions he asked me uh, the one i always remember is he asked me what my death row meal would be like what 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 would i want to have uh, as my last meal and i said my grandmom's duck curry and uh, he's he's mentioned several times uh, over the years that that's the answer that made me made him hire me um and over the years obviously our relationship has evolved from uh him being a mentor and a teacher to uh, a partner and a very very close friend uh i am actually curious to know like what are your fondest memories of chef floyd i know both of you go back many 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 years uh when did you first meet him so um you know i was in bangalore at the time this is in the what 96 97 and uh, 95 96 97 around then and um we had you know i had just uh gotten out of under the over our first restaurant and, and malini and i moved to bangalore to actually set up and run protima baby's kutiram retreat uh out out in the boonies in bangalore in hesar uh, <laughs> in hesaragatta and uh, i got a um, i got a call from michael romano who's the um, uh, you know the culinary director of the whole union square group at the time um and i knew him because uh, you know i had i spent time at union square cafe in the past and stuff and so when he said he was coming to india on a on like an r and d trip and i guess this was the r&d trip that they were doing for tabla so it was both floyd and um, michael that came to bangalore and then i took them around there and we came to bombay we went around here and uh, it was it was actually quite it, it was it was like really interesting because i remember uh, they were staying at the taj west end and i think um, the taj group was sort of hosting them through their entire trip in india and i think the deal they had was that they were supposed to show the taj chefs uh dishes or give them some <laughs> some kind of uh, teaching yeah. on western food while uh you know in exchange for uh some insights into local cuisine and i remember chatting with floyd in bangalore and he was He was like really pissed off at the time because um, <laughs> you know uh, everybody was fawning over Michael Romano and everybody was ignoring Floyd 
and it's the same yeah. you know it's uh, it's the same thing that he always uh, spoke about i mean it's one of the one of the reasons he left india is that he just yeah. you know felt that people didn't recognize other uh, you know people didn't recognize chefs for their talent but it was all politically driven and you know yeah, he was yeah. he was a real purist from that sense he's a real hard worker and um, uh, you know he he i guess like all of us crave the the recognition um, you know for the for the effort that that you put in from my perspective your journeys ran parallelly in a lot of ways uh, tabla his ground baking restaurant opened in 98 and uh, yep there was around the same time i think 99 is when you opened indigo um, that's correct both April, restaurants yeah. that changed the culinary scene uh, where, where they opened i think tabla for just elevating indian food uh, beyond the norm and indigo for of course redefining what it means to eat out in restaurant um, what were some of the challenges back then well i think clearly you know one of course was ingredients so so i mean we were like forced to actually use local ingredients and now it now it's sort of the uh, it's coming rigor, full circle right? i mean every everybody <laughs> wants to use only local yeah. ingredients but back then i mean i was doing you know the thing about indigo is you know we were we were playing with food i was well i mean it was it was it was fundamentally western because that was my training too uh, in the states but my taste buds were indian and so you know whether i indianized western or westernized indian and i kind of played with the i kind of played with the same thing i'm not saying all of our dishes were that way but we had a bunch of uh, maharashtrian inspired uh, dishes on the menu and i remember tabla i mean i remember eating there several times and um, with uh, with floyd and um you know i think it kind of was the same thing with him his 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 training was uh, was very was very french you know he um, yeah. he had worked with uh, great cooks at at uh, les pinas and you know had climbed the sort of uh, the hierarchy there i think he was finally at one point the sort of executive sous chef for uh, yeah. maybe the chef cuisine i can't remember and so his his uh, training was classic french and he did the same thing he 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 basically took western food and sort of uh, indianized it with flavors and uh, and some tech and spices and technique and that so tabla was was like really a great um uh sort of straddler of east and west you know so it it, it yeah. kind of re- it defined indian food but it also i think what it did it really made uh, you know at the time all the indian restaurants in new york were all the bangladeshi restaurants doing doing rogan josh and, you know all yeah, just sort of uh, basic butter chickens and and, yeah. and that kind of stuff yeah there like were a couple of other indian restaurants but i think floyd really raised the bar and kind of allowed the western palate to start understanding the uh, combination of indian spices and flavors and and textures i remember going to bread bar uh, the year it closed uh, that was the same year that i was in new york working at laban and uh, in 2010 and uh, again i mean it was familiar yet very very new and different and unique uh, so chef floyd incidentally did not come from an originally a uh, Uh, culinary background he started studying biochemistry uh, in bombay back in the day uh, you but too right that's really bizarre because that's bizarre because i did biochemical engineering too at columbia yeah. in uh, in new york i had no idea that that uh, that floyd studied biochemistry i mean it's so bizarre yeah so way way too many parallels yeah and then uh, he went on to uh, study at uh, dadar catering that which is where he met uh, his uh, wife barka uh mm-hmm. they kind of uh, it's a really incredible story because he he studied at uh, la roche in switzerland and uh, he came to the us uh, to attend his brother's wedding in uh, 1988 and he just, and he just and he never just left on. yeah <laughs> yeah uh which uh, i think uh, th- 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 there's a certain amount of like there was sort of mischievousness almost childhood like mischievousness to him uh all along and that's something that uh, yash samir and i really loved about him because uh, he was 
at the same time like a mentor and like we used to call him papa ji because obviously he's like not old enough to be our dad but like uh, much older but at the same time he would be the uh, youngest at heart in the group so he was always the prankster he yeah, absolutely was but uh, coming back to i mean what he did for bringing indian food uh, in a new avatar back to india i think uh, uh through the bombay canteen it really i mean it's not like and it's it's true for tabla as well uh tabla was in the first fine dining indian restaurant and uh, oh, i think bombay canteen was in the first modern regional indian restaurant in india but uh it again redefined how uh, we all looked at uh, indian food how did the hook up with uh, with, with floyd and uh, you guys happen samir and yash actually uh, went to cornell um mm-hmm. and uh, i've heard this story so many times uh, they both met uh, at the bar after orientation on the first day became friends and said we'll open a restaurant together some day uh, and uh, after cornell samir went off to work uh, at northern grill where chef floyd was okay. uh, yeah. uh, the executive chef um, mm-hmm. and uh, chef floyd actually told samir uh, what are you doing working in a restaurant here you should be going back to india and setting up a restaurant and uh, samir actually pretty much said okay if i'm going to do that will you open it with me and this i mean chef floyd has been asked to open restaurants multiple times but his his i guess his instincts just told him to do it uh, with samir and that's how that kind of happened uh, and uh, yeah i mean fast forward to 2015 we opened uh, when right around the time when we opened uh, i mean we were doing uh, like tepla tacos and we were doing uh i remember you coming very early on uh, in one of the first meals i remember the feedback you gave as well you found uh, that the acidity in the food was a little uh, overpowering uh, i don't know if you remember i remember that, that too i remember, I, yeah. i remember it very well <laughs> yeah um and we took the feedback uh, very constructively we actually got a lot of flack in the beginning uh, a lot of people uh, said why would i go out and pay money to eat uh, which was like uh, yeah not just indian food but also the produce that we used right so uh, yeah. with you being someone who's uh, kind of food philosophy has evolved over the years uh, what has been your kind of understanding of how uh, regional indian food has evolved in india well i think it's i think it's i think we're at a point now and i think um, and clearly you are you are one of the reasons this has happened is that uh, local regional cuisine is cool again you know um actually not not even again it's just cool now um i you know it's um it's taken a handful of i think trailblazers and chefs the the entire group you prateek gresham you know i mean um, all you guys who who like come together and who are now doing um you know food of their heritage uh you guys have taken it a step further and you're basically doing uh, regional cuisine from all over the country and i think it's i think it, it, it's really important because we have you know we've got such rich culinary traditions in this country and so little of it is really known um you are very much part of that movement as well uh leading from the front i would say um and it's actually the thought that triggered for me was that it's in our culinary schools as well right i mean uh, a a young uh, hotel management student knows how to make a hollandaise better than he knows how to make a sabudana kichdi uh, and there's yeah. something inherently wrong about that um i'm not saying that you shouldn't learn how to make a great hollandaise but uh, how do you uh, just ignore uh, and brush past your your kind exactly. of heritage and just uh, go and learn something uh, foreign um exactly. another thing that i think uh, Uh, both you and chef floyd uh, have in common is that you redefine what it means to be a chef i think uh, chefs are always hidden uh, behind closed doors uh, in the past uh, but uh, with uh, what both of you did uh, suddenly chefs had a voice uh, you were able to uh, influence the way people thought about food the way people ate i mean you have to understand i you know i'm a I forget the term but uh, you know compared to the uh, millennials now okay switching careers and 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 doing all these things is, is like quite common place um it was unheard of in floyds in my time okay um, yeah. i mean you know i did i did 10 years of biology 
um, uh, chemical engineering, biochemical engineering. You know, <laughs> I, I, I dropped out of my PhD and then I switched and decided to start cooking. And, you know, Floyd had, Floyd had a very similar tra uh, trajectory. And it was at the time, I mean, the time when we decided to, to do what we were doing and to follow our heart and all that, it was, um, it was very tough to do these things. You know, people today, today people jump around careers and uh, um, uh, career paths with ease, you know. It was, yeah. un, it was, it was unheard of back in the day. So, so I think that was uh, definitely um, something that, you know, that, that like he was able to do, which was quite fantastic. And and the other thing that uh, really I mean it's it's seldom discussed is uh, today when you talk about someone aspiring and learning to become a chef, uh, it it almost seems like it's like a, a horse with blinders on with nothing else but just learning food, 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 and more food. Uh, yeah. And I, I think I mean I, I think that's a very narrow approach to learning how to become a chef. I think it's important as as creative individuals to have alternate interests. Uh, I, I've seen you uh, take interest in so many different things. I mean, just, just in, I mean, I know how much care and thought you put in just photography, right? Uh, Chef Floyd with his gardening, he had a lovely garden at home and he, uh, but I think, I mean, that's, that's something that you don't really hear a lot of chefs or young cooks really concentrate on as well. And, and what well, are your thoughts on that? It, uh, well, I think you, I think you hit the name of uh, the nail on the head. I mean, I think, being a chef isn't just about cooking, as you as you very rightly said. I remember speaking with Alice uh, with Alice uh, Waters and and from of uh, Panis fame, and her whole thing was that what we do, you know, and it, it's to do with it's to do with food, but it's more to do with heritage and your culture, right? And for example, she was a great advocate. I mean, she she of course is the uh, is the uh, top of the slow food pyramid in uh, in the states, and and um, you know her whole point that was that uh, you is that you dine with with family and friends, and you pass down your heritage at the table, right? Um, and I think cooking and eating is really a part of all that. It's yes, there's a there's the sustenance angle to it. But if you yeah. look beyond that, it's actually the 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 conviviality of uh, sitting around, sharing a meal, sharing ideas, uh, you know, sharing your history, uh, family, exchanging ideas, um, and and such. And I think part of the creative process um, has has a lot to do with with uh, with thinking about what you are doing and why you're doing it. Um, I think what you're kind of alluding to are thinking chefs versus just cooking chefs. Okay. I think yeah. it's important for, for, for us as uh, restaurateurs or as um, cooks or chefs, whatever, to really think about w w what it is that we are doing with the food on the plate. Okay. Um, you know, you need to think about sustainability, about where the food comes from, um, how how you eat it, when you eat it, why you eat it, um, why you don't eat it with other things, why you do eat it with other things. I mean, there's a you know, there's a there's a reason to all of this. Um, another thing that again uh, I really took away from uh, my time with Chef Floyd was travel, and how travel really influences oh, yeah. you as a chef. Uh, and you, uh, I know, uh, are, are a major uh, travel uh, aficionado. Like you, I, I know that you are constantly bitten by the travel bug. Um, yeah. I what think, has been I your memorable was... trips? Oh, Christ. You know, and I say this, I, I say this often. People say, what's the best meal you've ever had? And I know exactly the answer to, to, to that. When I was in, I spent five summers in southern Italy in uh, Reggio Calabria um, and I remember going one day we had gone up in the mountains behind uh, Reggio the uh, Aspromonte mountains and uh, with my friend and, and we passed this stone hut 
and there was smoke coming out of the top. I mean, it's 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 as cliched <laughs> as as it can be. Okay, smoke coming out. There was this group of uh, uh, women in black, um, somebody playing guitar. They were dancing the tarantella, you know, which is a very Sicilian, um, southern Italian dance. And this shack, they, it was run by a husband and wife. It was, I guess, an um, outside part of their home. They had a wood-burning oven in there. There were two benches outside with a nondescript bottle of olive oil and a nondescript bottle <laughs> of red wine on the table. Yeah. And they made pizza. Like the house all wine. They did was made, all they did was make fresh pizza. And we yeah. sat there eating this pizza, listening to this music, watching these, these, uh, these uh, women dance and tell stories as these fantastic rectangular pizzas, like really fresh uh, with anchovies or with olives and capers, you know, I mean, all sorts of stuff. It just came out and it was perfect. It was who we were with eating together, where we were. Um, it was just right for what it was. It's the simplest meal I've ever had, but it was the most memorable meal I've ever had, you know, because everything came together for it. And I think that's, that's like really what dining is all about, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, I, some of my fondest memories with Chef Floyd have been uh, on trips that we've taken together. Traveled a lot uh, from Calcutta to Goa, Delhi. Uh, when Opero uh, was about to open, we made a trip to Portugal together. Um, and I actually got to spend a lot of time with him in Napa uh, just uh, last November. Uh, and we actually drove through uh, and did a couple of winery tours and um, and and again I, I think uh, I shared with him that sense of almost childlike wonder when you try something for the first time or you or you come across uh, a dish that completely blows your mind. I remember being in Portugal um, and we tried uh, letao, which is the roast suckling pig, uh, mm. which is just like pig and salt. Uh, roasted in a uh, wood-fired oven, uh, yeah. super crispy skin. And again, I mean, those those kind of experiences, uh, you don't really forget. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I think uh, the same is probably true for you, but these travels really inspire and uh, just create, right? I mean, they, they, they kind of uh, embed themselves in you and uh, uh, influence the, your style of cooking, whether consciously or subconsciously. I think I think a lot of times, and I and I remember I talked I we had Floyd and I had talked about this a lot. Is that where is that where you draw the sort of influence from? And I think a lot of times it's more a subconscious expression yeah. than a uh, than a conscious one. You know, I mean, I remember he he used to do this. Um, uh, he used to do a salmon salad with uh, dana dal, and uh, I mean that that combination. You know, it just it just came intuitively, um, you know, and I uh, and I think it, it, you know, I think it's just triggered from from some places. Like I remember, um, I was at my aunt's house and we were having lunch one day, and uh, and 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 they had actually it it, it like was a family get together, and she had done panchamrut, you know, and and I tasted her panchamrut, and immediately in, in my mind mm -hmm. went pork chops you know and uh, yeah. and it was very yeah. funny because then we actually tried i i got the recipe from her and then we went back into the kitchen at indigo and we and we started playing around with it with pork chop we like eventually it uh, morphed into a sauce for fish and i remember talking to floyd about these things and i think he you know things things are kind of epiphanies for him too along the way and and so this yeah. this again goes to goes to, you know, what you said earlier on is that it's important for, I think, chefs today or, or cooks or, well, I mean, everyone for, for, for that matter to, to be able to travel and, and, and get as much experience and influence as you can from, from so many different, you know, uh, foods and, and uh, experiences and cultural experiences too, because you don't know where that subconscious creative birth comes from yeah i i think of it like uh your creative well and you keep just all your travels just keep filling that well and uh at, at some point you kind of take stuff out of there as well and i've seen chef sure. floyd uh like go back on flavor memories from like decades ago 
uh, and bring those back up and it's just amazing to see um your 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 food now at qualia is uh, very ingredient driven very technique driven yeah. um it is uh, kind of cuisine agnostic if i am not mistaken uh, it, yeah is there but is there a regional cuisine that you are in like you are you lean towards uh, are keen to explore in little more greater depth depth well i think one certainly my maharashtrian roots there's no question about it i think uh, maharashtrian food is you know fantastic you, and it's so chef rahul you need to open a you need to you need to do justice to open this a maharashtrian uh, restaurant city in open maharashtrian restaurant maybe i will maybe i will um i have a lot to learn How there amazing and, that would and, be and for me and for me that's exciting because because i know so little of it okay personally um i have never considered my myself a good indian cook you know indian food cook um even though even though i just love I've, it and, and my taste my taste buds are there i have i have heard different stories of people who who've come and eaten at your home uh oh okay but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but to me i think it's great because uh, you know i personally i don't stop learning and um uh, you know um i feel that there's so much that i need to know about my own um roots maharashtrian food yeah so so uh, you know because it is so it, it's so different from the coast to inland um to the to the deccan um in the north of maharashtra in the east of maharashtra the food is so varied um and there's obviously a lot to learn there the other cuisine which i love which happens to be yours is i love the food of kerala and i remember when i traveled and i and i and i did this story in kerala on beef um and we we traveled for two weeks with uh, with uh, with uh, kondanast actually and and what really struck me about kerala which is something i found really beautiful was that you know it's the first place where i felt that um cuisine really evolved based only on the ingredients that were available in that area in other words you know yeah. whether you were hindu muslim uh, catholic uh, whatever it was christian you all ate the same food it's driven only by the 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 regionality terroir. Of it, right if you will yeah exactly yeah. by the terroir and i thought that was a really amazing thing it's really fantastic because it's, it's, it's because one it's, of my favorite quiz in this world ah uh, yeah i know that it's it's probably going to be next on my uh, list of places to really travel and explore because uh, honestly i i know the food that i grew up eating uh, in cochin uh, till i was 18 but there's a, so much more to explore i i i've i've heard so many stories about uh, cochini cuisine which is the food of the cochin jews uh which is a whole world unto itself uh, so yeah um that i would be but, very uh, interested in, in considering i am uh, jewish I, too so i will i have this uh cochini jew book it's a cookbook oh i'll i'll, I'll share with wow. you wow um, i'd love to see that but uh, i think i speak for everyone when i say that uh, that maharashtrian restaurant needs to happen um okay. what what is the most important thing you learned from uh, chef floyd either as a person or as a chef i think you know he was fiercely driven by and didn't care about what other people thought it, from a point of view of he, he he was like very driven by what he wanted to express and i think um, i think that was that's a really amazing thing you know because when he first started doing and he started dabbling in indian food as i was saying you know playing with it with the west and 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 you know his classical french training um it took a lot of guts to do that and uh, you know in a yeah. in a place like like new york where 9 out of 10 restaurants fail you know in the first few months um it it took a lot of a lot of guts to 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 do that and and i think he was he was always that way he was very clear about uh about what he wanted to express and how he was going to do that 
and um, i think that single mindedness um, is is a thing that i probably really admired in him uh, he had this uh, humility about him where he would yeah. straight up i mean there's someone with like 30 40 years of experience who would straight away admit that if he didn't know something and he would be like okay teach me uh, you know and that's something you very rarely see um one of the last meals that uh, chef floyd had in bombay before he left for new york qualia. was at qualia uh, i remember it was me uh, yash samir and uh, chef hussain um, and uh, you were actually dining at qualia that that night as well uh, you were at the table yep. next to us with your family and friends and uh, i remember it was a really special meal because uh, i mean the food is obviously spectacular but we just had a lot of fun um, you sent a bottle of wine over complimentary you came over to the table multiple times um, yeah, yeah. Um, so i mean i just want to thank you for that because that is a, that's a beautiful memory that uh, uh, i'll hold on to thank you no it was amazing yeah uh, so thank you chef raul uh, it's been a pleasure to take a trip down memory lane with you and uh, i'll see you at uh, qualia soon and i will and i'll see you at the canteen too i, I like understand uh, you guys are opening soon yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed <laughs> already thanks a lot i it's been it's been like great chatting it's been great chatting about floyd uh, remembering yeah. him yeah and um when you travel through kerala take me along with you <laughs> come along i'm i'm it's it's, it's going to be intense but i i think uh, you have way more experience uh, uh doing those crazy food trips so yeah i'll i'll tell you when i'm going and if you're free come along wonderful i'd love to do that together Thank you.